Hello and welcome to the OpenMX video tutorial series. This video will teach you simple bivariate regression using matrix specification. On the left, what you see is the equation for a bivariate regression. On the right is the associated path model for this equation. I have highlighted the relationships between these two. All regression coefficients are located on the arrows of the path model. The triangle represents the number 1 and is used for modeling means and intercepts. To model the intercept of this equation, we multiply the number 1 by b0. To model the effect of our predictor x on our outcome y, we multiply our x variable by b1. We also have an error component to this model. We model this as an error variance of our outcome variable y. Unique to the path model, we also model a mean and variance of our predictor variable x. Let's begin. First, we load OpenMX with the library function. Then we read in our data. This data was generated by the model you see here. Our goal is to see how well OpenMX can recover the values of this model given that it does not know that this model generated this data. We can then store the data into an object called dat with the read.csv function. The data will be available in a link below. Next, we can inspect this data with the summary function. We have two variables just like in our above model, x and y. Next, we will create an object called manifests, which will just be the names of the variables in our data set, x and y. Now we are ready to begin our structural equation model. We begin by creating an object called myModel1. Into this object we store an mxModel function. The first argument of the mxModel function is just the name of the mxModel that you want to give. In this case, we are going to be calling our model simple regression. This model is also a RAM type model, so we set type equal to RAM. Manifest vars is an argument for the names of the manifest variables in our model. Earlier, we created our object manifests, which is identically this. As we are making a RAM type model, we need to specify matrices for our model to use. The first matrix we will specify is the A matrix, which is the asymmetrical arrow matrix of our model. We do this with the MX matrix function. The first argument of the MX matrix function, full, designates this matrix as a full matrix, meaning that we will supply the values for each cell of this matrix. In later videos, we will discuss other matrix types. The next two arguments, 2 and 2, designate this matrix as having two rows and two columns. The next argument, by row, lets OpenMX know that we want our matrix read in by row. We set this to true. The values argument sets the initial values for our model. Dim names specifies the row and column names for our matrix. When using matrix specification, it is important to notice which variable goes with which cell and which matrix. Here, due to the way we have set up manifest vars and our dim names, the first row of our matrix is x and the second row is y. The same goes for the columns. The first column is x and the second column is y. The next argument, free, specifies which value to allow OpenMX to estimate and which ones to keep fixed. Labels is then the name of our free values. In our model, we only had one single-headed arrow going from x to y, and we called this arrow b1. Finally, we give this matrix a name. Because this is our asymmetric matrix for our RAM model, we will call this matrix a. Notice that in this matrix function, free, labels, and values are all the same size because they represent the same matrix, just different information about that matrix. Although this might take a little more time to set up, this structure allows users to have much more control over exactly what they want to model. Now we can repeat this process again for the S matrix in our model. Again, this is a matrix of the double-headed arrows within our model. Here we model the variance of X as well as the error variance of Y. We fix those values to free equaling true and setting free equal to false to everything we do not want to model. We finish by naming this matrix S. 
Now we can model our filter matrix F. This matrix uses ones and zeros to separate manifest variables from latent variables. Because our model has no latent variables, this matrix is an identity matrix. Finally, we have a matrix for the means of our models. This matrix only has one row, but two columns, one column for each variable. As we are estimating the means for this model, we set both of these values to be true. We then call this matrix M. Now that we have our matrices for the RAM specification, we can throw them into an MX expectation RAM function. This function will use our matrices to calculate a model expected covariance matrix for our data. MX fit function ML will then try to minimize the difference between this expected matrix and the covariance matrix derived from the data. We then close our model with an MX data statement. The first argument, observed, is our data set that we loaded in earlier. Type is equal to raw because we are using raw data as opposed to a covariance matrix. Now let's run this entire model. We can inspect the structure of our model by just looking at its name. Here you can see the number of variables, their names, and the matrices which we use to fit this model. Once we are comfortable that we have our model set up correctly, we can use the MX run function on that model to create a new object, MyModel1 run, and then look at a summary. At the top, we can see estimates of our model parameters and their standard errors. Name is the name of our parameters. Matrix is what matrix they came from. Row is where the value is going to, and column is where the value is coming from. It appears that our structural equation model did a good job at recovering the original parameters of this data set. Next, we have some information about our model. Observed statistics is the number of data points used to fit this model. Estimated parameters is the number of free parameters we estimated within this model. And degrees of freedom is the subtraction of the observed statistics from the estimated parameters. Fit value is the negative 2 log likelihood of our model. And number of observations is the number of rows of our data set. Next, we have information about the AIC and BIC values of our model, along with the estimations of fit. The next video in the series will teach you how to test path significance using model comparison. Thanks for watching.